Hi, this is Mike Trujillo with Cakewalk, and in this edition of Go Deeper, we're going to be replacing a kick drum sound using Sonar's Audio Snap. Now, a bit of a backstory about what we're going to be doing. When I originally recorded this song, I had used a Neumann U87 on the kick drum, which is an awesome mic, but not a really good choice for this application. I'm going to go ahead and solo it up and let you hear what the kick drum sounds like by itself. What you're going to hear is a lot of bleed and not very much definition. And as you can hear, the whole kit is bleeding in, which is not what I really wanted. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use Audio Snap to make MIDI notes that we can put into Session Drummer 3 and replace the kick drum sound with something more desirable. So first what I'm going to do is select the track, and then I'm going to open up the Audio Snap palette by choosing it from the toolbar. Now the first thing I'd like to do is go into the Options, and I'm going to change the MIDI note so that it corresponds to the note number for the kick drum in Session Drummer 3, which is C3. Now I also want to come over and check vary with pulse level because the amplitude of the wave is going to determine the velocity now of the notes that it produces. Now let's go ahead and turn on our transient markers and here you can see that we have markers laid on the kick drums. Now here you'll find your threshold. Now this is going to decide how sensitive Audio Snap is going to be when placing transient markers. Now as I decrease the threshold, you can see that it is actually adding more transient markers to the hits. Now this is not something that I want to do in this case because of all the bleed that we had on the kit and we're trying to isolate the kick now. So that's how you can use the threshold setting to automatically place or remove transient markers. And in this case, the default setting of 75% worked out just fine for what we needed. Now you can also do this manually in the track view to add or replace transient markers. You can do this by right clicking on any of the hit points and enabling or disabling the transient marker for that transient. So if you have something that showed up that you didn't want, you could take that out. Or if you had a ghosted note that didn't show up on a transient marker, you can lay one in so that it'll get triggered. Now that we have our transient markers in place, we're going to copy these transient markers as MIDI notes to the clipboard to be pasted into our MIDI track for Session Drummer 3. So now let's go ahead and open up the synth rack, and I'm going to select Session Drummer 3 as our engine. Now, you can use any plug that you want for this, but the kick drum sound that I'm looking for happens to be in Session Drummer 3. Let's go ahead and load up our kit. For this one, I'm going to be using the Steven Slate Sizzle Kit Wet 2. Now that we have our Session Drummer kit loaded, I'm going to move Session Drummer 3's MIDI track up under the original kick so that we can see them both together. Now I'm going to right click in the open area and choose Paste from the Edit menu. Another thing I want to do is set a start time of zero so that I know that it starts at the beginning of the song and everything will sync up correctly. And now, as you can see, we have MIDI notes that line up with the transient markers from the kick drum. Now, another thing I want to do is route this to my drum bus. So now let's mute the original kick and we'll solo up the Session Drummer track so that you can hear exactly what we have now with the MIDI notes made from the transients and audio snap. Plenty of impact and no bleed from the rest of the kit, which is what I was looking for. Next, I'm going to double click on the MIDI notes and open up my piano roll view. Here's where we can make adjustments to the individual MIDI notes that were made by the transient markers. So in a case where you might have had a hit that happened too early or too late, you can actually grab that and drag the note to its proper place. Now you can also go to the controller pane and adjust things like your velocity of individual notes. Now let's quickly compare those two kicks again. Let's hear the original kick.
and the kick from Session Drummer. Now let's go ahead and take a listen to the whole thing together with the new kick that we just replaced and the original kick muted. So now we have a nice punchy kick drum with no bleed and it sits really well in the mix and makes the heavy impact that I was looking for. As you can see, replacing drums using audio snap and sonar is a very easy process that yields great results. Go have some fun and experiment.